Okay, Megan, Caitlin, you're good to go. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully that will be our only technical problem to, to this afternoon. Thank you very much, and um, thanks for joining us this afternoon for uh, an introduction to the Econ Planning Suite. We're very excited to tell you about these new um, enhancements to the consolidated plan that we've been working on for the last two or three years um, here at HUD. Um, we've done a lot of work to really try and understand what it is about the consolidated plan that should be improved to make it a more useful um, means of setting priorities based on community participation and um, and an integrated assessment of needs and market conditions and available resources. And so that's really what we've designed these, these tools to do, is, as you can see here on the screen, is to support need-driven place-based planning, decision-making, and public participation through expanded, transparent data and tools. And we'll um, walk you through more about how we got to this and how these tools are designed to um, meet those needs in this introduction. So just to tell you a little bit about the development process, we went through um, sort of a long process of reviewing the consolidated plan rule, um, and we believe that they that the rule really does describe a very good um, planning process, but and also they allow HUD to prescribe a form for the consolidated plan. And so um, that was really the strategy that we've taken. We think that um, that by making these improvements within the existing rule, we're able to, to deliver results more quickly. And we also engaged stakeholders, many of you who may um, be on the webinar today, in this process to, um, to make sure that we were responding to the needs of grantees and also the public in, um, in the improvements to the consolidated plan. So we reached out to more than 3,500 um, grantee representatives and stakeholders, and we also worked with five grantees to pilot test these applications, knowing that if they couldn't work in the real world, that, um, that they wouldn't be of value. So, um, and we've also tried to make sure that they are aligned with um, existing, with HUD values that I'm, I'm sure that you've um, noticed over the past couple of years about regionalism by including an option in the template that we'll tell you about for multiple grantees to collaborate on a single regional strategy while they continue to prepare um, individual annual action plans that describe how they'll allocate their individual funding resources towards their joint goals. And also, um, we've designed the data that we'll tell you about in the mapping tool to support sustainable development um, and show you some of those things as well. So just um, as I referenced before, we did a lot of work to understand the existing regulatory framework of the consolidated plan. And this, is, um, this slide is really sort of a schematic of the structure of the existing regulations. And you can see how, um, and many of you are probably familiar with this, um, how the consolidated plan regulations really do describe a pretty good planning process. It's based on public participation and consultation, needs assessment, and market analysis to support um, all coming together for a multi-year strategy and goals that are then you describe your implementation, grantees describe implementation in annual action plans and then their progress towards their goals um, every year in the consolidated annual performance and evaluation report. So by design, this, um, this regulation really should uh, inform funding decisions that help to get help, sorry, that help to get help where it is needed. Um, and just a little background, we also looked a lot about who our grantees are and the different types of challenges that they face. Um, and this, these next couple of slides really summarize sort of these are the four consolidated uh, plan grants. And any grantee that receives any of these four formula grants is required to meet all consolidated planning requirements. And this year, in 2012, there are 1,250 grantees subject to these requirements. And so as you can see, we've gotten between um, in the last five years, which is a typical planning cycle, uh, we've gone, our, the number of grantees has increased. But we've also seen the number of grantees receiving less than a million dollars in CDBG and home grants, which are the most common grants of the four consolidated plan grants. The grantees that receive less than a million dollars of these funds is actually greater now in the last couple of years than the grantees that receive more than a million dollars. So the number of grantees is going up, and as you can see on this slide as well, the number of funding overall has been going down. 
as an example of the impact on planning resources of, the, of these conditions, um, grantees can use up to 20% of CDBG funds, which is the most common of the consolidated plan grants for administration and planning. And as these funds are reduced, the funding for those activities is also reduced and also the staff that can carry those activities out. So um, before we began designing the econ planning suite, we took a good look at how the con plan was being implemented and the limitations of how it was being implemented. And one thing we found was lots of limitations with the current format. Um, one of those being the paper submission and that really results in the goals and activities that you report in a consolidated plan and an annual action plan being disconnected from the accomplishments and the, the fund drawing activities that you undertake in IDIS, the electronic system, making the plan less useful as a tool for tracking your progress towards your goals. It also um, doesn't provide clear guidance to our grantees to help them meet regulatory and statutory reporting requirements. Uh, so also um, another limitation of this, this format is that we don't have a central database of consolidated plans. Um, that means that they're difficult for the public to access because they're not all in one place in one format. And they're also difficult to compare plans look, and look for model practices across grantees and to assess our own grantees' um, risk and also success. And it makes it more difficult for us to, to track the effectiveness of these funds. Um, and the, because HUD hasn't prescribed a standard submission template for the consolidated plan, again, grantees don't have very clear guidance about HUD expectations for what um, is in the consolidated plan. We also looked at the limitations of the data. Um, we found that um, the data itself that is provided traditionally by HUD is insufficient to assess all of the community development needs and issues. It's typically um, for formatted or it has been based on housing affordability, while the con plan funds, especially CDBG, can be used for purposes beyond affordable housing. As an example, we, don't, we haven't provided um, a lot of data to support economic development planning in the consolidated plan, but that is a very important use of CDBG funds. And just, just really quick, I wanted to jump in. I'm seeing a lot of um, comments from uh, participants that they can't hear the audio. Is there any advice we can provide for folks that can't hear? Jason? Hey, I, think best, I think the best advice would be to call the phone number uh, 877-233-9772. Can we send that to them in a chat? Yes, I'll we can. Let's do that right now. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, I'm sorry. I'll continue now. Um, also, the data has not, um, the data, as I mentioned before, hasn't been provided to fully address the types of, of ways that you can use consolidated plan funds. Um, it's also not been provided down to the census tract level. So that makes it difficult to support needs um, assessment down in the neighborhood, at the neighborhood level. And it hasn't been updated frequently enough to reflect current conditions. We've previously relied on um, the diennial census, which is only up, has only been updated every 10 years, whereas um, consolidated plans are typically done every five years. And so grantees end up using the same data twice for, fall, for um, plans that are five years apart. It's also been um, typically supplied in SAS files, which require users to write code to access and to interpret data. Most grantees don't have full-time staff with the skills required to process data like this, again, making it difficult for database, um, data-driven planning. And that also makes these, um, the data not easily understood by or communicated to the public. So we think that the main impact of the consolidated plan limitations is that these plans are not as meaningful to grantees as a planning or program management tool as they could be. Um, many grantees uh, delegate the preparation of these plans to consultants, uh, which not only, which, and are, sorry, excuse me, the costs for those consultants are typically charged to limited administrative allowances. 
And also, um, it also results in the consolidated plan functioning more as a compliance and a budget exercise rather than a, um, an effective planning tool. Makes community participation challenging because the process and the plans are difficult for the public to access and to understand. And also places HUD's focus on compliance rather than supporting grantees to accomplish their goals, which is what everybody here wants to do. Our goals to address these limitations are to provide, we think that if we can provide better tools, we can make the con plan a more useful planning and management tool. So we are, we have worked to provide a submission template that grantees can prepare themselves rather than hiring a consultant to prepare, um, and to provide data that promotes needs and place-based investment. We also um, have been working to provide these tools in a way that engages public participation. So there's public access to all the planning data and the mapping tools that we'll demonstrate for you today. And they've also been designed to be easier to, for the public to navigate and search the new plan, for, excuse me, the new plan format. Um, and we also think that we need to um, approve, Im, sorry, excuse me, improve our ability to manage our programs and support grantees. So with a central planning database, we should be better equipped to highlight best practices, assess grantees' risk and success, and also identify needs for technical assistance, again, to help our grantees succeed. So this um, slide describes the new um, econ planning suite, as we're calling it, and it's designed to address those limitations that we just discussed with new data, planning tool, and a template. So the expanded planning data speaks to all the grantee fund uses, and it's publicly available through CPD Maps, which is our new data mapping tool, which is designed to make a bigger database easier to understand and to manage. It's a user-friendly interface for grantees and the public to use, and it's, and it's designed to support needs-based strategic investment planning. Uh, the electronic submission template also is incorporated into the Fund Management and Reporting System, or IDIS, the Integrated Disbursement and Information System, and it's designed to connect the goals in the consolidated plan to activities and outcomes that are already reported in that system. We think it will save grantees at least 65,000 hours annually, if not more, and it will save our staff time on, review, on the reviewing of the plans and allow them to partner more effectively with grantees to accomplish their goals. So going into each of the three components of the econ planning suite, um, the first one being the data. So we considered several criteria for including data in CPD maps, and those criteria are described here. Um, usefulness for affordable housing and community development planning, available nationally for all of our grantees, available at the census tract level, regularly updated rather than ever updated every 10 years, and at little or no cost to HUD so that we could maintain this database into the future. And the work of identifying um, this data was really done by a lot of people around CPD and also other program offices at HUD, subject matter experts, and even input from the EDA looking at our um, economic development data that we have been incorporating into CPD maps. This slide describes the, um, the data that we have included in the CPD maps and the comp plan database. So the top row there, the CHAS data, that really, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it, that's the data that we've been providing. Those are um, special cross tabulations that we request from census that describe housing problems and needs of extremely low, low, and moderate income households. It's a very powerful data set, um, and it's very useful for understanding what the actual needs are of those specific populations. But again, it's also limited to affordable housing. Uh, so we have really tried to expand that database. So the rest of this table really summarizes the other types of data that are in the CPD MAPS database, including additional data from the American Community Survey, such as population demographics, descriptions of housing stock, workforce characteristics, travel time to work, things like that. The, another census product called the Longitudinal Employer Household Dynamics describes the changes in jobs and workforce over time, which is really effective, we hope, for economic development planning. 
Also, we purchased one data set from, the, from ESRI describing jobs and workers in key sectors. And then the uh, final three rows here describe data from HUD and other federal agencies that we're able to pull into the planning database so that um, we can provide it all in one place. So we're, we have the picture of public housing from PIH, which describes characteristics of public housing residents. The continuum of care point and time counts, um, describing the nature and extent of homelessness. And project locations funded with HUD funds, like CPD, CDBG, and home funds, HUD multifamily investments, public housing development, uh, Department of Transportation, and the map. And you'll be able to explore and find, um, find a lot of that data in there. The next component of the econ planning suite is um, CPD maps, which is designed to be a data-driven decision-making tool for our grantees and the public to use. And so we really wanted this to be accessible to all, to our grantees and the public in the same format. So we designed it to be a user-friendly interface um, that doesn't require a, any GIS special knowledge to use. It's a web-based tool that's available publicly without any special software or access restrictions, and it is a central database that's maintained by HUD, which actually makes it um, much easier and more efficient to update so that when we update the application and the database, it's updated for everyone. Um, the data itself is also organized to match con plan assessment and analysis requirements so that the public can actually see the exact same data in the same format that grantees are using to prepare the plans. And we also wanted to make sure that it supports a wide range of user skill levels. And so we designed a wizard to help new users prepare their first maps in the system. And also, we have a lot of data that's available behind the scenes in reports for custom geographies for a little more sophisticated analysis. And also a map query tool that allows um, users to easily highlight areas with specific and common characteristics. And we're going to um, demonstrate the mapping tool for you now. So I'm going to um, just open it up. And you should be able to see now, this is the interface um, for the mapping tool. When you first go to the website, which you'll see the URL up here, it's egis.hud.gov slash cpdmaps. And um, the URL should also have been in the invitations you received to the webinar as well. Since we're in Washington, D.C., We'll start with a um, we'll start with a, just a demonstration of how you could use this map to really um, understand where investments could be targeted in this city. So um, I'm just going to enter Washington as the city name, and the District of Columbia is the um, state in this case. And I'll click next. So that brings back actually all of the different types of grantees that are in this city. So we'll choose the CDBG. They all are listed separately because in cases like Hopwell and Continuum of Care, they have different, sorry, service areas. So we'll just choose CDBG and click Next. Um, this is the first step of the wizard. In the interest of time, we're going to go right over this. But you can actually choose different um, inventory and need categories to try and customize. It provides more of a filter on the type of data that you'll be able to choose from in the wizard. This just illustrates how we understand that um, our grantees are all different sizes. Um, and so where the national range of a, data, of a data set may actually produce a lot of variation in a large city, in a smaller city um, with a little bit maybe less diversity in some, in some different types of data, the, um, the map may show up all one color, and that's not very helpful. So you can change how the, how the data is presented based on the national data, if you're interested in doing it that way, the region that you're in, and that's the Bureau of Economic Analysis regions, or the grantee jurisdiction area. And we're going to finish there. I'm just going to choose that one. So the first thing you see when you go to, um, when you click Finish, is it takes you straight to the area that you're interested in. So this is the CDBG service area for Washington, D.C. And the first thing that you see is a summary of the consolidated plan funding amounts in the last program year. If you want a little bit more data on the area that you're looking at, you can actually pull this down. And we actually can see um, the data for the last five years of funding, um, some basic demographic information, and the number of households 
by different income categories. So we're going to walk through how you could use CPD maps to go through one of the pieces of um, analysis that are required in the consolidated plan, and that would be the um, housing needs of different types of households, including extremely low-income households. So this is one of those things where we have that CHAS data, the needs of different types of households, um, actually now available at the census tract level. And so if we go and choose community indicators here in the map selection tool, I'm going to look at extremely low-income households, and we'll just start with the distribution of extremely low-income households across the city. <clears throat> and that map should draw. There we go. So um, this just shows the areas and um, census tracts across the city and the percentage of just extremely low-income households within those tracts. If you want to know a little bit more, we can dig a little deeper and now look at the percentage of extremely low-income households with one of the housing problems that's described in the consolidated plan, and that's substandard housing. That's households um, lacking complete kitchen or plumbing facilities, and you can see that's a little less of a widespread problem in Washington, D.C., but if we want to see how that might actually match up with another indicator, we can use um, the low mod census tracts, which are actually, this is a rough estimate of CDBG eligibility for certain types of activities by area of benefit. And it's important to note that these are, these are low mod census tracts. They're not intended to be used to calculate area of benefit for, or eligibility for area of benefit activities for CDBG grantees. Um, that that will still continue to be calculated the way that you're doing it now until further guidance is released around differences in the American Community Survey. But it does provide a good reference for where are there higher percentages of low or moderate income households. And as you can see, the percentage of the census tracts with a higher percentage of extremely low income households with substandard housing roughly correlate to those tracts. So if we want to look at another um, issue that may be a little more widespread in the city, we can try overcrowding, which is more than one, um, defined as more than one person per room. And again, we see that that problem roughly correlates. There are some anomalies here but roughly correlates to tracks that meet the criteria for, for um, a low mod. We look at, and so we'll just keep going down the different types of needs, um, percent of extremely low income households with severe cost burden, and that's households that have more than 50%, they pay more than 50% of their income for housing costs. And this we kind of see the inverse of what we saw in the last two maps, where the problem actually exists more heavily outside of the low mod income census tracts, and it's actually less severe inside those tracts, except with a few exceptions in these high percentage tracts that are also low mod. So if we wanted to see how those might match up with where the city has made its investments to see if maybe, if maybe there are already investments in those areas, or that might be an option for considering in our investment strategy that's described in our consolidated plan. We can start to see where, how um, CDBG housing activities, home rental activities, and then other, like HUD multifamily, low-income housing tax credit investments, and public housing development show up on the map relative to those tracks. And so we are going to hope that those are going to draw right now, which they did before. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, while we're waiting for those to draw, I can show you another, um, another widget, that, um, another tool in the report, um, or in, in CPD maps, which is this reporting function. So while we're waiting for those um, investments to show up on the map, we can see, um, oh, there they come. I'll put this now and show. Um, you can kind of see now how those tracks with the higher percentage of extremely low-income households with severe cost burden are also areas of lower investment of at least the um, multifamily low-income housing tax credits and public housing. And since we've Prepared, you'll actually see that's true when the CDBG and home activities also show up on the map. So going back to um, the reporting function, 
we can um, get a little bit more information about those tracks if we choose. Um, we can select them on the map. And I'm just going to um, add to the selection to just show you how this works. <clears throat> and a couple of different ways you can select tracks. So this little box will select any tracks that touch the um, shape that I drew. And now I can, um, I'll just call this our target area or areas. And we can also compare the areas that we've chosen to the city, the county, the state, the nation, or another custom geography if you wanted to compare them to a different neighborhood. I'm going to compare them to the city as a whole. And here we see how you can actually, the, we'll, in a minute you'll see the report output itself has a lot of data and different tables in it. So once you got to know the reports a little better, you could choose which section of the report you wanted to see, or even which specific individual tables you're interested in. So when I click Finish, <clears throat> we'll actually download an Excel spreadsheet that shows a lot of data about the target area that we chose, and also the reference the reference geography. So here, this is our target areas, also called in the report the target, and the reference is whatever you chose to compare it to. So wherever you see target, that's the area you chose first. Reference is the second area. And as we go down the report, you can see there's a lot of data in here. But if we go, um, I actually did a little um, did a little looking at this report and found that. Um, 20% of the households in these census tracts are extremely low income. 22% of the housing units in these tracts were built before 1949. And 20% of all households are severely cost burdened. So if you were looking to see how you might direct assistance across um, the city, to other places that might also meet these criteria and to also you know, relieve the cost burden on extremely low income households across the city. We can actually find other census tracts that meet these similar criteria. So I'm going to do a search and using our map query tool for um, tracts that meet those different criteria that we discussed before. So you can choose up to three variables to query on. So we've chosen these three. <clears throat> and in a minute, um, um, we'll see the total number of census tracts in the city of Washington, D.C. as a whole. And as we adjust the parameters across these different variables, we'll actually be able to see um, how, how this, this number is going to go down. So we're looking for um, the percentage households with severe cost burden that are more than 20%. The percentage of households that are extremely low income are also more than 20% in our result census tracts. And now we see we're already down to 60 census tracts that meet our criteria. And the percentage of, oh, this is owner units. Shoot, I picked the wrong one, but let's present. Um, so now we're down to 46 census tracts that meet the criteria that we've set. And we click Finish. This is actually all of the resulting census tracts. I'm going to turn off some of the data that's on the map so that you can see it a little better. We'll turn off these um, bright green multifamily properties. But we see how most of the resulting census tracts 
overlap with our target areas, but also we can see where there are other parts of the city that are similar to the tracks that we've chosen. So if you were to design a program based around the needs of severely cost burdened, extremely low income households, you can see how this tool would help you to target your resources around the city and to direct the development of these different types of projects to address the specific needs as you've identified in your consolidated plan. So we're going to go back to the um, rest of the webinar now and show you also the, um, the, some shots from the mapping or from the planning template that's now available in um, IDIS. So again, this is the um, URL for the CPD map planning tool. So here, um, this is just a, a diagram showing sort of how the current template that a lot of grantees are using that's out there, it's a word-based template, um, but it actually results in sort of four separate plans for housing, homelessness, special needs, and community development. And those can be um, competing priorities. And we've actually talked to a lot of grantees and heard from them that this structure actually um, results that, that they, these different departments that administer these different grant funds actually prepare their, four sec, their, each, their section separately, um, and they never see the whole plan together. They never get together and actually talk about what are the overall priorities based on an overall assessment of need. And so we've reorganized the, um, the template, and as it's, as it's structured now in IDIS, it has a one, one needs um, assessment section for housing, homelessness, special needs, and community development. One market inventory section that addresses those things. And it drives so that communities can really use this tool to set priorities. Because we all know that, as the, especially as funding is reduced, we can't do everything. And we need to be able to address funding where it can make the most impact. So this um, demonstration just shows you some screenshots that you'll see when, if you are a grantee when you get into um, the comp plan template. But um, this is the menu for the consolidated plan template. And you, this is actually for an entitlement jurisdiction. But you see how um, it has a one needs assessment section, one market analysis section. And within those sections, there's a discussion of overall housing needs, for instance homeless needs, non-homeless special needs, and non-housing community development needs like economic development. And again, in the market analysis section, very similar. So when you get down to one strategic plan, you have one set of goals, one set of priorities. So we also heard from a lot of grantees, especially in um, the HUD Ideas and Action Forum, that um, we needed to have a more automated, um, easier to understand format where, that you knew when you were done, when you had met a requirement. And so this is sort of an example of how where we can, we're trying to gather um, information that is required by the compline regulations in a very uh, easy to understand way. So this is a consultation screen. Um, and you see how if you're going to be talking about the organizations that you've consulted with and preparing your consolidated plan, you would name them, indicate what type of group they are, and those types correspond to the regulatory requirements what section of the plan was addressed by the consultation, and then briefly describe how that, that um, section of the plan was addressed by this consultation. And then add another organization until you're done. So not only does that make it easier to meet this requirement, it also makes it easier for a consumer who is um, taking a look at your draft or at a grantee's draft plan to actually understand which groups were consulted and how, and how it actually shows up, how that consultation had an effect on the plan. Um, also here down below in this slide, you see that we have other space to describe other local or community plans that may overlap with the consolidated plan. So um, one of those, actually the required element is the continuum of care that's part of implementing the HEARTH Act regulations, but also where you may want to talk about the types of other plans that are going on in a community that overlap with the consolidated plan goals, like a regional transportation plan, for instance. You could talk about that plan here and explain how it actually um, integrates with what other, what other things are going on in your community.
We also wanted to make sure that as we were building this database, we were also integrating it into the consolidated plan template and basing the template on data that we can provide to grantees. So this um, slide not only or illustrates the, some of the new economic development data, and in this case, educational attainment by age and median earnings by educational attainment, but also that that data um, in those boxes is actually pictured as it would be provided in the consolidated plan when a grantee opens their plan. So um, the regulations also allow for grantees to provide alternate data. Um, if there's local data sources that, that they have that correspond to the consolidated plan um, requirements, they could actually use that data instead. And so all this would allow you to do would be to select alternate data instead of the default data that's provided by HUD, provide a little bit of information about that data, and explain how you would have altered this table so that a community member who's reviewing a draft plan could then take a look and understand how that data may differ from the data that they're seeing in CPD maps, because these tables are also all available in CPD maps. Another feature of the consolidated plan template is the ability to actually import a map or data from CPD maps into the plan wherever it's appropriate, and also to add other elements like a JPEG image, a text box, say a grantee wanted to um, discuss this particular table. While we don't have a narrative response that is specific to this table, if they wanted to talk a little bit more about what this table means in their community, they could do that by adding a text box, typing in what they'd like to say, and then that will actually show up in the report. Or adding a table if there's additional data that they'd like to present. The point being that the, the template is, is a standard format, but it's also customizable to individual grantees' um, needs and conditions. We also wanted to make sure that the consolidated plan template um, reflects not only the HUD resources that are made available through the consolidated plan, CDBG, HOME, HOPWA, and ESG as reflected here, but also other resources that may be marshaled in, in each community that are addressing the same types of needs so that we get a comprehensive look at the funding that's available. And so this not only presents the grants that are available to the grantee at that time, allows them to um, talk about what's going to be available in year one, and also the expected amount available for the remainder of the con plan, but also to add other sources and talk about how those sources are leveraging the um, federal funds. So you can see sort of how the econ planning suite has really been designed to, in, in response to our understanding of our role, which is to help build capacity of grantees with tools and technical assistance. So the econ planning suite fits in there on the left of this diagram with the template, data, and a tool, and also training to make this information available to the public and also these tools available to the public and also to our grantees. And then on the other sort of side of the spectrum, CPD is also working on capacity building with TA and also monitoring and oversight as a way of identifying needs um, of our grantees to help our grantees produce the affordable housing and community development outcomes in their communities that these funds were designed to address. It's also important to note that these tools, CPD Maps and the CON Plan, the Action Plan, and the CAPER templates were all built on top of existing HUD infrastructure. So the GIS server and also IDIS were here before we started working on the consolidated plan and they um, are integrated into those existing systems so that they should be able to be um, maintained as a part of those systems as we go forward. So they won't hopefully expire as other plans have or other tools have in the past. And they, oh yes, and also we, oh I didn't, I didn't address that really before, but this, this diagram also illustrates how the data, the goals, and the data in, that you enter in the consolidated plan, excuse me, link up with the, with the data that, you're, that grantees are already entering into existing IDIS as part of the grants management and reporting process, so that when it comes time to do the CAPER, that connection can be made. The CAPER is the Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report. 
Um, and that's really an annual report that's been disconnected from the work that's been done. Grantees end up really reporting accomplishments data twice as, um, as the year goes by. As they're um, entering that data associated with specific projects over the course of the year, and then at the end of the year they end up, because the CAPER is a paper form with no connection to the system where they've already reported that information, they end up reporting it again. And so you can kind of see how all of these pieces fit together and inform each other to try and create a more unified and integrated system. We also think that this could be useful or will be useful beyond the consolidated plan as part of other funding processes where you could understand sort of what the data in your community says about meeting eligibility criteria for other funding processes or other NOFAs that are out there, but also that we think that grantees and the public can use this data to support other advocacy and fundraising level fundraising efforts in their communities beyond and maybe even not even connected to HUD. So this is um, this final slide is really um, about the implementation and all of our materials and upcoming webinars. So um, grantees that are submitting comp plans on or after November 15th of this year would be required to use the IDIS template um, to submit their plans. There's a CPD notice that um, was issued today, and we will be providing webinars and other types of support for grantees to be able to meet this requirement. Um, the first of these being manuals uh, for both um, CPD maps and the comp plan template in IDIS to um, and those are now posted on the updated Consolidated Plan website, and the URL is here as well. Um, and there will be, there will be two um, orientation webinars coming up in um, the rest of May about, around a little more detail about how to use the Consolidated Plan template on May 16th and how to use CPD maps on May 23rd. And you can watch the Consolidated Plan website and training TA page for more webinars um, and materials that are coming out this summer and fall. I should also note that this also doesn't keep grantees. If there are grantees that are interested in using the consolidated plan template in IDIF to submit also an annual action plan that isn't connected to an existing con plan in IDIS, we've also built that option in to um, allow grantees that may want to take advantage of this clear guidance. It's not a requirement until the next multi your strategy is due, but it is definitely an option that we are hoping grantees will take advantage of. So unless I, um, I think that covers it for today, there will be, um, again, if you, because of the call, because of the volume of, um, of users signed up for this webinar, we don't have it open for um, question and answer today. If you have any questions that you'd like to send to us, you can send them to the Consolidated Plan email box, which is conplan.mailbox at hud.gov. You can also um, there. Well, you can also look and watch the training and TA page for more webinars throughout the summer and fall. So, unless um, there's anything else I missed. That concludes this webinar for today. We thank you very much again for participating and um, look forward to continuing to provide additional materials and um, information on these new tools.